Hello, this is a demonstration video looking at a DIY installation of a very small scale solar power system. The technical data of the solar panel is shown on the back on a plaque. And as we can see, the manufacturer is claiming an efficiency, of a cell efficiency anyway, of 23%, which would have been measured in the ideal conditions of temperature and illumination. We can also interestingly see that this 100 watt module is made up of 36 individual monocrystalline silicon cells. These are configured in three rows of 12 cells each. We can also see that each panel that I have should provide a maximum useful voltage of 18 volts DC with a maximum current of 5.56 amps. Also at the back of the panel is where the electrical connections are made. And you can see a box containing two wires, the positive and negative. If we remove the cover, you can see a silicon seal to keep the weather out. And inside you can see three bars. This is because we have three rows of 12 cells each and two diodes. Those diodes are called bypass diodes. A diode is an electronic component which allows current to flow only in one direction. These diodes are used in two different configurations for solar panels. One is a bypass diode. In this case, we have a string of solar panels and we have a bypass diode across each solar panel. The function of the bypass diode is so that if one solar panel in a string is covered by shade, you can still get a useful voltage out of the string of solar panels. Another configuration is the blocking diode. The blocking diode protects the solar panel from reverse current. Say for example you have a solar panel connected to a battery and you're charging the battery when the sun is out. Once the sun goes down, you don't want the battery discharging into the solar panel. It could cause damage to the panel. In the configuration we're installing, using two solar panels, which we're going to connect in parallel, we're going to connect them to a common bus bar using two blocking diodes. We're also going to connect our data monitoring equipment to our solar panels. So we're going to measure voltage. To do this, we'll take the voltage from our solar panels we put it for a potential divider to drop the voltage to a signal level which is compatible with our monitoring equipment and we're also going to monitor current. In current we're going to measure the voltage across a shunt. A shunt is basically a device which gives out a voltage proportional to the amount of current flowing through it. Then the bus bar is then connected to our grid tie inverter. So this time-lapse video shows probably the best location where to position the solar panels on the house roof. As we can see, this time-lapse is taken throughout the day. And there is shade which is being generated by the trees. Obviously, we don't want the solar panels to be in the shade. But the very top of the house on the corner looks an ideal location, just big enough for two panels. Unfortunately, Housing Association regulations make it a little difficult for me to install these panels on the roof. This relatively small installation, the cost of the application fee to the HOA is a significant proportion of the cost of the panels. So, regrettably, I'm going to put the panels in a non-ideal location against a fence. So with the wires connected to our solar panel, we're going to check the polarity on the ends of the wire using a multimeter. As we can see, the open circuit voltage here is around 19 volts. So we've now identified which is positive and which is negative. So to connect our solar panels to our grid tie inverter, we've built a basic electric panel. So we have the positive from our solar panels coming in through two fuses, through our blocking diodes. We have our potential divider connected to give us our voltage, going to our data logger, and it's going through a shunt. This particular panel has got two shunts as it's built for expansion because hopefully we're going to connect some more solar panels to this system. Then through the shunt it connects to our grid tie inverter. The grid tie inverter is connected to the house grid system through an energy monitoring plug. The energy monitoring plug can monitor and log the total number of kilowatt hours that has been generated and also the instantaneous power that the solar panels are putting into the house. It's a cost-effective alternative to our computer-based data logging system. When we look at the data that was generated from one day of running the solar panel, on an average day we can see that we managed to generate, in this particular case, a maximum of around 95 watt-hours of energy from the panels, and most of that energy was generated at midday. This is when the sun was radiant on the panels. 
Therefore, if the panels were in a better location and had more radiant light, you would have significantly more energy generated. If you want to support this current photovoltaic project, or indeed its expansion, or see the live data of what the panels are currently generating, please visit the website below. And as always, thanks for watching, please subscribe, and I wish you all a very sunny day. Thank you.